recording that we can share as well. So yeah. let's just start the official time. Like, no. Okay. So uh, welcome to the glossary meeting. A uh, few glossary updates. Uh, Nate, the CNCF Deaf Advocate, will help with technical reviews. Um, and we've been talking, or I've mentioned the cloud native learning journey for a while, because we've been like gathering ideas, basically like have all these different resources in one spot, like all CNCF resources, right? Like starting with stuff that is very uh, basic and then like going with more advanced and advanced. So uh, we have a developer assigned, which is the same as for the uh, Chris Abraham, the same person who does the glossary page. Um, so we'll be working on that. So that like actually kind of is kicking off and the goal is to have that um, live by uh, KubeCon um, and then have the CNCF push it out. And um, yeah, just so people can discover different resources, including the uh, glossary. Mm -hmm. um, and Seoko, are you, oh, his audio is connecting. Can you hear us now? Seoko? Oh, yeah, thanks. I can uh, hear you. <laughs> oh, you are somewhere outside. Yes, right. Uh, I have difficulty in connecting to a Zoom meeting in mobile phone. Oh, OK, mm. OK. Do you want to do your <laughs> section? Do you want to uh, talk? Pardon? Do you want to talk through your section? Uh, sorry, I'll. Uh, I can put this. I'm not sure. I, I'm actually using my mobile phone, so I'm not sure. Can you see this? Sure, I can I can check. So you already talked about the glossary update, right? Yes, yes. So we're now uh, here. Yeah. I, I just wanted to show some atmosphere in. <laughs> OK, hold on. So, what oh, is it? Wow. In South Korea. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's kind of the night site in Seoul, Korea. Uh, I'm sorry, very sorry to late this meeting. Yeah, uh, so I actually hope to uh, share that uh, some latest uh, update in uh, localization related issues. I hope to share, share that uh, there is new localization initiative from uh, Japanese. So we already included Japanese members. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it, it is outside, so I'm very sorry. No worries. Uh, so uh, we already initiated Japanese and we are uh, we already created Japanese development branch and they already opened an uh, initial PR for initiating their first to, uh, compu configuring their localization branch. So uh, Maybe after we approve a PR that need to need maintain us approval, then they can start the, their uh, translation job. So I'm going to ask you maintainers to approve that Japanese configurations uh, PR. Uh, yeah, this. That I want to share the first topic, and second one is actually the about the uh, some configuration changes regarding the uh, Chinese content. As you know, uh, we got the traditional Chinese localization team, and there has been the uh, simplifies the Chinese team already. We already have, and between them, we need to some 
coordination between them. Actually, the uh, traditional Chinese majorly used by uh, Taiwan people and the traditional, I mean, simplified the Chinese used by the uh, Mandarin and mainland Chinese. So somehow we need to coordinate them. And my proposal is that the, we have to change the context to original context to Chinese to into the uh, simplified Chinese and <laughs> I'm sorry, this kind of Korean <laughs> musical. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'd like to suggest to change current Chinese content into the uh, simplified Chinese content, and we already added the traditional Chinese uh, sp spoken to the mainly by Taipei. Yeah. Yeah, did actually, I, I. Yeah. Hmm? No, did you see that discussion at all? Uh, I, I think we already discussed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I no, think I, I, I didn't. Was there. Yeah, I, I didn't know about that, but I mean, mm -hmm. sounds sounds like yeah. a, a fair approach to do i mean yeah i like i learned i didn't know there was like simplified and traditional chinese. yeah that's that's like, crazy i just knew like that we had chinese and was like okay now the taiwanese are doing something and they also speak yeah. chinese it's like okay like something needs you cannot just say chinese right and and so apparently uh yeah i thought it was really interesting which you can see here it, this is much more yeah, complex yeah. right like there's much more so this is like yeah. a simplified version and they use the more traditional version so i was like oh this is so cool like learning I had no idea because it's like yeah, it's interesting. It's not a phonetic language, right? So it's like yeah. it, it's this is just the same thing, but in a simplified version. And I was like, when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, this is so much more complex, so much more, you know. So uh, yeah, uh, and then like we came to the discussion. It's like, okay, what is the actual way to kind of differentiate between the writing styles? Um, and so that was a interesting because we didn't think about that when the first team came on right and we want to make sure that we accommodate different different countries with different versions and different um yeah like, who, who use like yeah different writing styles like to be sure that we can accommodate all of these if we want to have them eventually anyways i thought it was interesting so i learned a lot sorry so yeah i i just want to say that uh it is the Based on our discussions between other localization groups, as well as grocery maintainers, we didn't just decide. We uh, consulted with the localization experts, including the uh, simplified Chinese, as well as the uh, Traditional Chinese is the main point. Maybe it, uh, this decision is maybe very useful to other localization communities. Is there any uh, opinion or question regarding on that? No. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Actually, we already decided this matter and uh, we are going to change some content regarding the uh, the existing just Chinese content into the uh, simplified Chinese so that you can accommodate both simplified and traditional one as well. So we are going to do that. Actually, I hope to see folks who uh, are maintaining, co-maintaining Chinese, but I don't see in current uh, meetings. So maybe we have to post this message to Slack again. 
Anyway, uh, I hope to go to the next content. Uh, I'd like to share that we uh, actually have to keep localization members have to keep update this uh, TOML file, which can convert the localization content uh, based on some Vari variables they can use the frequently. So if we change English content in TOML file, it should be applied to localization content address. So uh, recently we added this uh, uh, some UI GI regarding the uh, we cannot say about uh, or censorship related content in English. So localization members should check the TOML file and they have to make their own, their versions TOML file. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Catherine showed the link. Yeah, we added new TOML file content. The section should be localized for all localization content. So I hope to share it, but I guess currently uh, people who joining this meeting are uh, English and the overall maintainers. So let me share this uh, message to localization channel. <laughs> uh, sorry, there are lots of my colleagues here. <laughs> yeah. Your colleagues. Okay, now you have to tell us where you why 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 you're there and what are you doing and what what and why uh, we're, what we're stealing you from. Yes, some of them know so ladies. <laughs> yeah, I I I, I will I will introduce it later. <laughs> Actually, they are a really expert in uh, using private cloud and public cloud in just. Uh, usual cloud manner or cloud native manner as well. So maybe I hope to uh, invite some of these men members to, to contribute to this localization effort or our closely effort as well. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the, I, I covered the third item and of course, the last item is about the uh, workflow to report outdated content in uh, localization content. As you, uh, as you know, there are many several uh, localization branches, and since the main branch English content keep changing, we need to keep update the localization branches as well. And it is not easy. And in case of Korean localization team, we uh, we already have a uh, experimental workflow. And actually it is contributed by, majorly contributed by Yoon Gon Kim, who is uh, active maintainer of Korean localization content. He, uh, he introduced a workflow, GitHub Action, that uh, automate the difference, checking the difference between English content and uh, localization content and making a report for uh, using a, an issue. So you can check the uh, the link I provide. Yeah. Should, do you want me to click on it now or? 
just like for people. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Since we have three of here, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, no, this is a 404, that's weird. Mm, yeah, uh, Catherine, you can you can just check the link and... Yeah, yeah, that, that, that link is also okay. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you see it is a uh, issue and it is kind of report and uh, Korean localization team tried to check the changes during Korean localization job regarding the English content. So we checked the changes in English mm -hmm. and we found four files has been changed during our localization job. So based on this report, we can check which content should be changed for Korean. Okay, that is that is really good. I mean, it looks mm. really good uh, that this can be automated. It's kind of crazy. Um, so I know it's great to capture them here, but we were th we were kind of thinking of creating a. Um, a page on the glossary, like in the docs or something, where we can capture all these workflows. So there's one place, because like no one will go through, I mean, if it's here, it's gonna be lost at some point, right? We wanna make sure that the, our, these things are all captured somewhere where people can go and find them all together and not search for them within an agenda. Um, so we're, because we were talking about it, right? To create like a, I don't know, we have, or it could, it doesn't have to be here. It can actually be in the, in the, because uh, we have a localization, right? Section. Uh, right, actually it is kind of a automated picture uh, provided by GitHub and based on GitHub functionalities, we made a workflow mm -hmm. uh, effective to Korean only. But once a uh, Korean team think it is very beneficial for, uh, for all localization teams globally, yeah. then we will keep uh, share how it works and how to apply it. Then I think uh, it is very beneficial to uh, other localization teams who are struggling, struggling in the, yeah. uh, keep updating the English content to their localized content. Yeah, I mean, that's a question that comes over and over again. So if you figured, a good workflow we have to put it prominently somewhere on the localization doc so people can find them um okay so if you say you want to test it first and kind of be sure that it works that's great but let's not forget to because um to add it right um, um okay cool sure thank you and uh i would like to say that uh it is not perfect is, it cannot be perfect, actually. It is based on my experience in Kubernetes uh, technical documentation localization uh, since after the four years. It is not uh, perfect, but you have to keep update. We means the Korean localization team hope to uh, collaborate and keep update and Actually, we need more collaborations from other localization teams. I hope to mention that. Okay, yeah, and and I mean, none of these things are always perfect, but it's like, we don't, like, it's a huge help, right? It doesn't have to be perfect before it's like how, like, there was no way of actually seeing this, so. 
Um, that's good. Yeah, and let, let's kind of maybe like put a call to action in the localizations channel as well, like for uh, other teams to help uh, with that. Sure. Um, okay. So. Um, okay. Uh, that next time. Yeah, uh, I think we can go to the the next item. Localization. The localization of team update. Yeah. Um, so the Italian team wrote here that it would be nice to have an automation that creates a new issue for localization teams every time a new term is merged in the English branch. That kind of goes into the same direction, but I guess like it's not a change, right? Could it also include new things? New terms, like your workflow? Soko? Yeah, I, I, I think it is another way to keep updated localization branches or localization contents. Uh, yeah, if we keep changing the English content, um, localization team may not have to keep follow the changes and uh, apply those changes. So I think it is request on the based on that situation. Um, but I'm currently I'm not sure the changes in English content is not that frequent. Am I am am I right? <laughs> yeah, like there are not that many new terms merged. Yeah. Yeah, especially the not new terms, but the change of terms. Yeah, yeah, we're not like we want to do like a review of all of them, but I like we haven't even started with that. So maybe uh, we can balance. Uh, well, whenever we have uh, changes, something, and making an issue, opening issue is not good for maintenance, since we have to keep uh, trace the changes. Yeah. So maybe we have some uh, consensus on the uh, a trade off in this manner. Uh, since we, uh, the people participating in this meeting is or uh, maintainers. Maybe uh, another way is to uh, creating a new label for localization so that uh, if we ha make uh, lots of changes in terms or we make a new term in English, then you can put a uh, new label localization so that other localization teams keep checking the yeah. new changes or new terms. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, so that's on us to remember to do that. Um, the same thing would be with a new with a new term, right? A completely new term. We could remember to post something in the channel as well, right? Like more. Or do uh like and do an issue. We just have to what, remember. What I kind of don't understand is um if the solution that you were talking about, Silko, um that you already have and you have to test it, if it can detect both the changes and the new stuff. Uh yeah, actually the report that shows outdated content in localized content. Okay. It's just about the already translated or localized content only. 
So if we say there are, yeah. I'm not sure, uh, 30 uh, English terms and Korean localization team translated 15. And we keep checking the differences within the 15 Korean localized content, whether the uh, related 15 English content has been changed. Yeah. I if see. we didn't uh, translate it, we don't need to care, actually. Yeah. Is yeah, it so, understandable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got it. So, so, so this, this concern that the Italian people brought up um, would not be um, would not be catched by that solution. So we maybe would have to think about such an automation, right? Uh, sure. Actually, uh, I think in case of a Korean localization team, uh, we try to make a, a workflow that automate checking the outdated content, but uh, the other localization teams don't. So in case of Italian localization team, think uh, if we keep changing, if we making uh, some changes in uh, English content, then uh, they think, uh, oh, why English terms keep changing and how to apply and how to sense the change in the content. So the reason why I suggest to, to uh, making a new label localization is that I would like to announce uh, the localization co-maintainers can check uh, major changes in English terms so that they can uh, handle the differences. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I, I guess for them, it's, it's more for, I, I mean, when I get it right, they are talking about new terms. So they want to get notified whenever a new English term comes up so that they can also probably create a task to localize it in their language. I think, but like we can do the same thing, you know, like we could like create a label for major updates and then like the same, because it's like, that's something like, because we sure, are- actually, Sure, sure. Yeah, like, of course. One, I mean, I, and, sorry, I like the label the, idea, yeah. And then an issue for new terms, right? And say like, uh, attention, localization team, okay. new term, whatever. And then- Yeah, have, yeah, oh, okay, okay. Both, so, both are big changes, right? So if- yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it in the very end, it, it doesn't really matter from an automation point of view if we create a label or or a new issue. Um, while I'm a huge fan of creating labels versus then issues, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I I guess we because this topic is already showing up. Uh, since um, a long time period, I guess, maybe always in different kind of shapes. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess we we should investigate a little bit. Uh, sure, no, uh, we have to investigate, and I uh, keep saying that uh, it is uh, the workflow from. Uh, South Korean is not perfect, and yeah. the uh, supportive way is uh, making a, a localization label so that uh, uh, provide uh, we can just put the localization label or actually refactor label to the uh, PRs changes English content a lot. Yeah. yeah. It is, I, I think yeah. yeah, it is both ways. So uh yeah 
in case of Noah, you care about the grocery overly, as well as the uh, German localization. So if you are uh, the uh, co-maintainer of localization for Germany, then maybe you can check the uh, that refactoring or localization label uh, to uh, keep up to date your the German content. But maybe uh, maybe sometimes later, if Korean localization team or uh, Brazilian team have uh, make a new uh, best practice to update the changes in English content, then maybe you try to follow our emails. Is it acceptable? Yeah, yeah, I try to I try to catch up if I if I got everything right. So um, your suggestion is to um, to introduce the refactoring label, for example, um, and that we apply it to to pull requests that um, that would imply changes on the English term. No. It's the other way around, right? So every time, yeah, yeah, I, I, I have a hard May time to follow. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, maybe it could be issue or PR. Okay. Maybe uh, the yeah. okay. changes suggested by majorly by PR. So if we change some uh term in English, yeah. Then, and we uh, maintainers maybe think it is too much changes. Then, uh, maintainers or localization maintainers can put that kind of uh, localization label or localization detector, so wow, that okay. other members. Yeah, I see. Uh, who maintaining localization can check. Can check, yeah. Based on the GitHub. Yeah, okay. it is yeah, okay. just my idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with the idea. Uh, we should just yeah. write it somewhere. So, so that, that, that we know how, <laughs> sure. yeah, what, what, what we kind of agreed on. So again, to sum it up, so whenever we have a pull request that changes an English term, we add the localization refactoring label or what? And then every localization like leads or team members can check if if they need to update their localized term, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think it should be the, if there is lots of changes, not the simple change. Yeah. yeah not a comma, yeah. uh, yeah. typo and yeah. like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Major, major changes. Like stateless yeah. application and, mm -hmm. you know, which are now going to be a concept. That's a major yeah. change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I need some feedback from localization co-maintainers or yeah. approvers, but okay. yeah. I, I'm going to share this mirror to uh, selection as well, so that others can provide any feedback from on, on this issue. Yeah, that would be yeah. cool. And and then we can maybe like bring it, just bring it up in the next meeting again and, and, and see what the feedback was and then we can kind of Mm. Okay, I will, I will, I will bring it to the next uh, meeting as well. Thank you, Roa. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I guess it's uh, it's it's time to to give an update about the German uh, localization. So, 
Um, I guess the blog is finished. Um, we 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 have all the content, right? And I think it will be published tomorrow. I think they sent June first. Perfect. Right? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, oh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Very cool. Finally. That's nice. Um, we have uh, 13 terms, but I checked that only 11 are uh, online. We I, I I just need to to do a rebase and to um yeah to 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 merge the we need to merge the, the the branch with the main branch to update everything um we have three terms in review at the moment and we have one new active kind of active person um and it would be cool if we we can manage to to keep that person um in the team um yeah so that's basically, that's, that's basically yeah. yeah that's always good news but it's 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 hard to kind of keep the momentum <laughs> like yeah, yeah, always but yeah but you see it's like always waves right like yeah. suddenly yeah, exactly. a team is very active and then they're completely dead it's like i don't know yeah. it's like work. do you want to do the french as well since we don't have the french team here um yeah i mean i can just read it <laughs> yeah uh, it's, yeah the french team has as well one new active person which is Ooh. kind of cool um and yeah it's pretty similar to our team the team is starting to be more active and have more exchanges uh and the path to publish the first version has been shared and agreed between us so apparently they have kind of agreed on a workflow which is a good thing i guess and i think um, something that christoph uh, mentioned last time is they want to go live with a lot more than 10 words oh oh wow okay that's cool because so, they came to the conclusion that ter 10, 10 terms is not really valuable because it's like because okay. in one term you kind of link to another one and they were yeah, saying makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they decided it was, as well to kind of um select terms that make sense together so they kind of yeah. they didn't just do it like ad hoc which was kind of interesting they had like a strategy so i was like oh interesting so once they go live uh it will actually be pretty solid like there will be a lot more to it which is kind of cool um round robin i would like to, uh, i guess uh, i think uh Soko, you put some kcd info in here oh uh, yeah sure i'm pre preparing some talks to the korean kcd mm -hmm. as well Chinese, Taiwan's KCB, and I uh, I suggest to to a uh, uh, small talk to KCB Taiwan mm -hmm. and accept it. So I'm going to say about some uh, uh, championship cloud native glossary effort mm -hmm. as well as how to contribute non code contribution to cloud native in Taiwan uh, KCB. Also, I'm uh, actually co-organizer of KCB Korean. Oh, nice. And it will happen in uh, July. Okay. And I already have uh, an appoint appointment regarding uh, uh, hands-on for non-code contribution in cloud native. It, uh, the content should be majorly in Kubernetes uh, SigDocs, but I hope to introduce uh, regarding the glossary as well. Hmm. Yeah, and just be sure to let people know, I think like at the beginning of the conference, uh, like you know just letting people know that there is a glossary that they because it's not only contribute contributing is like letting people know that there is a glossary in korean right so i think that doesn't need to be a session or anything but like since you're one of the co-organizers if you're on stage or doing like uh, welcoming people or something just you know let people know that there is something like that right in their own language Sure. Uh, I think uh, the first part is about introducing the glossary, and the second part is how to contribute. Yeah. Uh, as well, uh, including the 
English content as well as the localized, localized content as well. Uh, in case of the KCD uh, Taiwan case, but uh, in case of KCD Korea, uh, I, I, I got uh, a hands-on session, so uh, may not have too much the introduction pages, it will be just to uh, majorly focused on how to process it, how to contribute to, to GenCF as well as uh, Kubernetes. So uh, let, let me handle this, uh, those uh, presentations and I just hope to share. Uh, I'm working on that part as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And I, I will check the lighting session from Catherine. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and I know we have uh, good content, shared content regarding cloud grocery. I'm going to fully use that content. Awesome. Yeah, that's what it's for, right? Like we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like let's like in each time we can improve it, you know, like new ideas and then have something. So right, right. If someone else Perfect can use it, I'm very happy. <laughs> okay, and then Ji Hun suggested something to remove permission entries from the CNCF glossary repos settings YAML file because it's overriding from written by CNCF people. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I, 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 I guess there is no June, right? No. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he have to care his daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry if uh coworker from June. I uh, uh luckily I aware of uh what this is about. And uh I hope to uh introduce that uh, we are using using setting workflow in our GitHub repository setting. So that workflow applies our setting configuration into GitHub repository. So if we need to update uh, approvers or maintainers permissions new uh, development branches, then <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. It's very hot place in South Korea. No, no sorry worries. Sorry about that noise. <laughs> no worries. And uh, those uh, settings can be done by GUI in GitHub GUI. But we are using, using settings uh, GitHub workflow action. And we, in order to update our configurations in our uh, repository, we have to uh, update settings configuration file. It is how we work when we add new localization members or when we change uh, maintainers permissions. But recently, Censorship organization added new workflow, kind of workflow, new app in that covers whole uh, repositories in CNCF to GitHub organization that effective to CNCF organization, which is uh, Sheriff board. This board checks the all members in CNCF organization and actually cares and Sheriff uh, whether individual repositories, repositories at uh, not uh, confirmed or invalid members or permissions. Is it uh, understandable? 
Catherine and Noah? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I did see like some changes on some other repos and I saw that they were doing like some some yeah. some things. But I think like uh Seoko, like the whole thing, like how to do like the whole the technical stuff, like honestly, it's like you and Ji Hoon are kind of like always been our leads. It's like just do whatever you think is the yeah. appropriate. Like, That's I, what I was going to say. So I mean I, I cannot really say if it's like good or bad that way. Um if you guys say that, that's yeah. that's you've we historically do, been our gurus for all that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> so whatever, yeah, just just I think like for that type of stuff, whatever you and Ji Hoon decide, just go with it. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh thank you. And uh yeah, we we will our duty as the maintainers. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm very sure Ji Hoon will do that. Mm -hmm. And the reason Jun why put uh, this item into our agenda is about that uh, some changes. Uh, previously, we only we only cares about uh, the settings that y a m l pi only for automate uh automatically update uh permissions and settings in uh our grocery repository only but since there is a new policy from CNCF organization regarding the sheriff board so uh, maybe we need to uh, reduce the capability, automation capabilities from the settings workflow in the our repository and then apply the overall settings from the CNCF organization. So that's the what you suggest uh, in this issue and uh, surely I, I I agree so uh, as Catherine and Noah maintainers mentions that yeah I think uh, June and I and maybe Chris another key city of Shinship can yeah collaborate how to resolve this issue. So I just share uh, the current situation on behalf of the June's comment. Okay. Is it okay? Sure. Yeah. So we only have three more minutes. I just want to be sure that we get through the suggested terms as well. Um, so I put the little thumbs ups and downs and question marks that we had on Slack. Um, so I don't know who did what, like, I did not code, to be honest, I'm not sure. The message views has two thumbs down. Mark, do we have a question? Uh, no, I was just suggesting that we just maybe, maybe, um, uh, for the ones who are clear, like cloud native storage is a three times thumbs up and the Chrome drops like three times thumb, thumbs down. We just, we can just go on and label them accordingly. I could do it right now. And the rest could be like, yeah, still open, right? Yeah, so fault tolerant, I would say, but it's like, that's not necessarily like a cloud native term and doesn't... <laughs> We have like a few minutes. Uh, Seoko, could you just put like on mute? Yeah, it's really hard to, to concentrate. Um, Otherwise, we want to be at the party too. We're like. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm no, not sure <laughs> how this okay. round affects you. <laughs> We're just Sorry. jealous. Uh, we want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to invite her <laughs> in South Korea. Yeah. Uh, is it okay? The sound is okay? Yeah, yeah. Now it's better. Yeah. It's like. Uh, uh, 
Yes, I, I, I think the the terms overall, I think are they are very uh, fundamental uh, terms, except the web assembly part. So I mostly put the thumbs down in case of me. And in case of the message queue, I put a curious mark since uh, I think uh, they, I think uh, the message queue are very uh, involved term when we talk about some cloud native applications. So in that perspective, I think we should include that term, but uh, as you know, uh, that term is very general term, gen general technology or general uh, functionality in not only the cloud computing, but also in just computing part. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I think like it's, I, I don't feel like it's n that necessary to understand cloud native and it's not cloud native itself. And we do have the event driven as someone. Yeah. So I think I, I, I saw very related the term already defined the term in cloud native glossary, which is uh, event driven architecture, uh, which includes some kind of description related with Kafka. Uh, actually, Kafka is a solution that provides uh, the kind of uh, message queue. So they are very related. So maybe we can lead the contributor to update uh, the uh, event-driven architecture uh, terms uh, about the uh, message queue, not just to uh, not affecting them. So that's the why I re reason. That's the reason why I put the question mark there. Yeah. It's, that's just my opinion. So please feel free to decide. Others, thanks. What do you say, Noah, about including it? Uh, I I said thumbs down. So I I think event driven architecture is valid, but message queues is like a, a certain technology. So I don't know. I, I don't think it's it's also it exists also without like without cloud native. Yeah. So I would I would I would not accept it. Uh, I I think I must too of maintain us this already to include this term. So uh, I do like to uh, give point to them actually. You mean like okay. going with thumbs down? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and we always said if we're not sure, it's better to first say no and then reconsider later instead of having someone work on it and then you know just get rid of it again okay so the other the rest um we can do uh yeah. offline. um okay i'll just update the message queue uh, issue and then awesome yeah awesome and then let's decide for the other ones in the next coming days and update those too and because I, I didn't i honestly i didn't I, I missed them so i didn't see those I was like, oh, there are all these issues. Uh, um, so let's respond. OK, cool. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, in case of the web assembly part, uh, I think we got some agreement from Chris, Vajor, and 
I and uh, I remember Catherine. something about it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, didn't we decide that we forgot to? Okay. So I'll I uh, highlighted that. Yeah. Uh, so please the um, triage that issue. Okay. Yeah, I can just do it because I'm already on it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks, Oko, for taking the time while you're out with your colleagues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have a blast. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very sorry that I'm <laughs> involved no, in other meetings. <laughs> it's okay. a change of the regular office. And like, I mean, yeah. you're at 10, <laughs> now it's 11 p.m. So it's like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, see, you, see you around. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.